nicely professionalized feminist government. Um, you're not wearing a mask, my dad has cancer. I really, I need you not to. You're not on my side. <laughs> you can't get infected uh, in this open space. Come Stop on, filming. give me. What's that? Stop filming me, please. Whatever. You're afraid of a China virus? Why don't we go to Chinese please embassy? Go six feet away from me, you crackpot. I am a crackpot. My dad has cancer. I want you to. We didn't have to come here then if you're afraid know, of a uh, virus, you know, you should have stayed at home. But why wouldn't you go away? I mean, come on. This is this is public safety. If you want to go away, you go away. Gosh. <laughs> Makes sense, right? If you're afraid of the virus, then stay at home. Why should I go away? What is this? This is we need to seek the defeat of our own reactionary government. While you mean we don't Biden? Have... Reactionary Biden? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. The thing, is, the thing is, is the other side uh -huh. is just as reactionary, but we have a special responsibility okay. to oppose our own government's crimes. Okay. And that's why we all should be here, and even more so. Did, did, you, did you vote Democrat? Did you vote for Biden? One time I did having to do with the stopping the consolidation of fascism, but they, the Biden and the Democrats He's your are guy, no? also a, a, a ruling class party. They have different strategies and tactics, of course. but they have the same basic loyalty. They have to the who? same investments yes. to yeah. all the companies. And <laughs> so, but what, what about but the war? I want to say one thing. Yeah. The U.S., as powerful as it is, the chance of actually making a revolution in a country like this has been very rare. But now, as they're fighting at the top, attempted coup in January, and one side gearing up for civil war. I think I've had this one before. You got this already? Yeah, I think so. Well, you need a copy. Okay, sure. Something terrible or something truly emancipating. All right. So, so what are we to do? I'm confused. Trump was bad. Now Biden is bad. But then, uh, yeah, will we ever have a good government? Then, what's the solution? Well, we need an actual revolution first and oh, foremost. Which one? Socialist? Yes. Socialist revolution. Yes. And, okay. And there is a question. And who's who's be the leader of socialist? This will get into all of those questions. Uh -huh. And everything you just asked is a vital question because. Uh huh. We're talking about doing something that we've dreamed of for our whole lifetimes. You dreamed but about has, social uh, revolution. 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 And there hasn't been a possibility to do that. Of course it but was. So around the world. Sleepwalking. Really? Saying <laughs> in the U.S. Oh, in the U.S. revolution. Okay. So you want a revolution? Do you also want a revolution in the U.S.? Um, I think there necessarily needs to be a big change in the system. Yeah. But which which one? I mean, which direction? Um, how how would you change the system? I mean, what's what's your plan? So, from direction, I'm guessing you mean left or right? No, I mean, you said you, you want a revolution. It's a big thing. I mean, a revolution, after all, with blood and deaths and deprivation. So, you want that to happen. And then, I mean, what, what's what's after the revolution? And who are you going to revolt against? I mean, what's your plan? Fundamentally, yes. the problem with society right now is uh -huh. that there's a small group of elites that are enmeshed with the government that uh -huh. decide things that are against the interest of the people. Against the interest. Okay. They're against the interest of the people. So you're talking about you lump together Republicans, Democrats, anyone uh, who is at uh, the top who, well, basically represents us. Of course. It's a representative uh, kind of democracy, institutional it's republic. It's supposed no? to be, but... But it's not. Yeah. Okay. Historically, they represent, uh -huh. represent the sections of, of the ruling class, not the masses. Of I got it. Okay. Of, you know, different sectors of uh -huh. industry. So they represent big pharma, they represent um, uh -huh. the military industrial complex uh -huh. and all sorts of different industries that have monopolies uh -huh. and so these are the people that uh, they have lobbies in the government or uh -huh. they actually have they switch between like someone who is in C like a high position in big media like mass media like cnn or fox or whatever and then uh -huh. they go to the cia and then they from uh -huh. the cia go, they go but, to the media. But, but what's what's your plan i mean that that's that's something that is really confusing so, so when when you say that you want to change the government, you want to change it. I want to get away to reach both of you. I really would like to continue the discussion.
us and we're having, but we can't do it now. No, no well, why not? Just, just a few minutes. I mean, if you can kind of tell me your plan. I'm really curious to, you know, to hear the plan. It's, it's easy to say, let's do the revolution. come from a person. A plan cannot come from a person, so there's not uh -huh. going to be a savior that's going to come and impose a plan on no, the no, 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 of course, I agree, but when I say as a group of people, a revolutionary, so we'll do the revolution, what's going to happen, the first step is easy. Let's say you topple the government, like it happened in Russia, it happened, you know, in the rest of the world, but what's going to happen next? What's the next step? What are we going to do next? So I actually don't think the first step is easy. I think the first step well, let's necessarily you... means that uh -huh. the people had some sort of organization that gave them the power to make a significant change. Right. So once the people are organized, I'm assuming that if uh -huh. we have a kind of structure that is more right. closer to actual democracy, it's uh -huh. closer to actually representing the people and developing the ideas of the people in the interest of the people, then that sort of organization will not only be a challenge to pr power, uh -huh. a challenge that would, you Your know, military power, that would challenge the state's power, the current state's power, things like that, but also it would be uh, ideological, in that once we have an organization that uh -huh. allows us to define what we need the system to be, to work for us, um, then the plan will be clear. So it cannot come first. We cannot b before then decide so, but but do, don't you think that democracy and revolution are uh, kind of two mutually exclusive things? No. Um, there is a lot. Of, yeah, it's there's a lot of things that are worth uh, a short-term sacrifice if it's worth it in the long term. So, for example, sacrifice. Uh, you mean? For example, uh -huh. most wars. Uh -huh. I mean, most wars. If if a war is consist has people fighting in it that they believe in the cause that they're fighting for, mm -hmm. people are willing to die for a cause that they believe in. So it's worth a short-term chaotic to, moment to kill to, to kill your for, opponents. For uh, that that kind of thing. stability. So you want to so you want to shed blood because it's a revolution uh, for for your ideas for your ideals. Is that right? And, and, and in many you okay contexts, with it? It's possible. Currently, uh -huh. in the U.S. context, it's not. No, but but there's a theory. I mean, I understand. So, is a theory you're okay with, uh, like spilling, well, basically, innocence of uh, blood to, to achieve your goals, whatever the goals might be. Yeah. For example, in, I'm from the no Middle problem. East. So, in the Middle East, uh -huh. there's a, the threat of ISIS. And uh -huh. so my people were ready to fight uh -huh. against ISIS because uh -huh. we're ready to die fighting ISIS. So that's an example of But it's a little bit different because so ISIS is the aggressor. ISIS is the one who wants to eliminate, well, basically, the people, yeah. I mean, anyone who disagrees with them. Right. But here we have a society where nobody bothers you, nobody's trying to kill you, nobody's to eliminate you. It's coming from you who thinks that no one the here system... Wants to but you, just, war for now. but you just said revolution, I mean revolution and uh, bloodshed, I mean they go hand in hand and you're okay saying, with it. I'm saying a revolution is coming in like the long term. I do think that yeah, but it doesn't fundamentally matter. a uh -huh. change of system will happen. But why? I mean, why do you think the change of system is necessary? What's what's wrong with the current system? I Don't you live a comfortable life? I live Especially comfortable coming life. from Middle East, I mean, to I compare the systems? So the... Um, the Marxist analysis is that there's currently a lot Marxist, of okay. s different small contradictions in society. And uh -huh. these contradictions become more severe or less severe. So uh -huh. that's why it varies on which location, which country, but even within a country there's different locations where the contradictions are different. Of course, yes. So a revolution is the change that will happen once contradictions become so severe uh -huh. that it's no longer sustainable. Uh -huh. So that's the only situation where a re uh, revolution would happen. I see. And that's well, what the guy was saying, was that currently it's not in this stage. I see. So, but the thing with the Marxism, and actually we had to study Marxism, because I came from the USSR originally, we studied a lot of Marxism, uh, cool. scientific communism, it was a total waste of time, of course, because, I mean, think about this way. Let's say that there's, there's a guy, I mean, you, you know the biography of Marx, the guy who never worked the day of him, in his life, that Engels... Uh, who is the industrialist, by the way, a capitalist, was the one who was supporting his lifestyle. Uh, so he was sitting in uh, his house, his place where he was living, dreaming about this revolution. I'm not make like you're dreaming. Dreaming is fine. So, but then the guy by the name of Lenin comes along. 
And he thinks that, well, how about if we implement the Marxist theory in practice? And are you happy with the end result of the implementation of theory uh, into practice? Would you like a research paper? I've, I've had sure. Yeah, yeah, give me one. Thank you. <laughs> well, first of all, it's not Lenin that decided that we should put it into practice because, of course, you're familiar with the quote of Marx that was like, philosophy so far has been, you know, thinking about what things should be or ought to be, but our role is not to actually change reality, We're trying to understand reality, but now our role is to change it, which is uh -huh. a famous quote by Marx. Uh -huh. So Marx from the start has been, his whole um, giant body of work has always been very, not that detached or theoretical, has been uh -huh. pretty uh, founded in reality. Uh -huh. So just like one point about that, yeah, but, but Lenin was the leader. I mean, if not for Lenin and Trotsky, the revolution would not have succeeded. And oh, it was totally. based on Marxist principles, not totally. on somebody else's principles. Marxist, I mean, strictly Marxist. Yeah. 100%. So, but what happened next? I mean, that's the question that I asked you. Okay, so the revolution happened, and then what? In Russia, you mean? Well, I mean, in your theory and in the practice in Russia. I mean, do you think that the end result was, was good? I think Actually. it's uh, pretty common in the West to say uh -huh. that it wasn't good, but uh -huh. there's, as in any situation, there's always a, an incentive to kind of paint it as bad, but uh -huh. ultimately we can recognize the good that has happened. So before the, the Russian Revolution, uh -huh. Russia was a very, um, not very industrialized, and uh -huh. the USSR single-handedly destroyed uh, Hitler and the Nazis. They didn't World start war the war. II. Wait, wait, wait. They didn't. The Russians destroyed. did not. But they didn't. They did not start the war. I to said get they the, destroyed the Nazis. But they started the war together with Hitler. They were allies. You know, before the war, Stalin and the Hitler. They were pals. Uh, they helped each other economically, militarily. You know that, right? No, that's not the case. Actually, it's not the happened, case. Okay. What happened is that. Um, Stalin did not want to start a war, and did not want a war to break out in Europe, um, uh -huh. so was trying for a diplomatic solution, uh -huh. but um, eventually the war broke out and the, the power, the military power of the Soviet Union uh, single-handedly saved the world from the Nazis. Okay, but here's, here's another question. I mean, we're talking about Nazis, but we started with the socialists. So you're saying? So I brought it. I brought. I brought the uh, no, the point about World War II uh -huh. just to say that it's inc incredibly impressive the achievements of the Soviet Union uh -huh. when it ha even just early on when it when it started it uh -huh. defeated the Nazis. It was a, a military because of communism. Uh, Yes, because of because. the organization that formed I after see. the revolution. So if not the... And another thing was that uh -huh. the massive industrialization of the Soviet Union that happened like in unprecedented... Time. And you know it was done by slave labor. You're okay with that, right? Um, that's not the case. But, that's not the case. Okay. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to deny that the most uh, rapid uh, forms, the most rapid periods, the most... Uh, rapid periods of uh, industrial industrialization, the uh -huh. biggest periods of growth, industrialization uh -huh. and that happened in human history have happened. Uh, uh, the Soviet Union takes second place, and the first place is China. So there's no so, hard to deny. It's hard, of course. I mean, uh, but Mao Tse, you okay with Mao Zedong murdering 50 million of its own citizens? You think it's wrong too? I, I mean, the wrong data. That's fully false and proper. False, data. I see. So I think this conversation isn't going anywhere. Uh, okay. <laughs> so. Fullbacks, this has been going on for eight years, but now they're facing a big confrontation and they need our solidarity. And that means we have to be out here and say, U.S. NATO, get the hell out of Eastern Europe. No war with Russia, Ukraine, pull back, no, recognize the independence of Donetsk and Lugansk. Seriously? No war with Russia. 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 Uh -huh. You remember we spoke earlier? Oh, sure, of course, yes. I'd just like to request, like, because um, were you filming me? 
Perhaps, yeah. I mean, it's a public space, no? Yeah, so if uh-huh. you were filming me, uh-huh. could you um, not uh, share it on like YouTube or on social media? Because I don't have a, I don't have a pictures or videos of me online, so I don't have like a social media presence. So I don't this, like. Then there's nothing to worry. Then if you don't have any social presence, so you don't. I'm, I'm it's, asking, a, it's a free country, you know? Right, right. I'm asking okay. you to keep it that way. So I'll, I'll think about it. it. Okay. So you could share it with your friends or whatever, but don't uh, share it on, like, I'll, post it, basically. I'll say, but what are you afraid of? I mean, that's I, what... I that's just, what. I, as a principal, I don't like to be online. I don't have... I mean, there, were cam- there are other cameras right over there. So did you ask everybody over here with I the camera? I didn't interview anybody. I didn't talk. But, but they took a video of you, you know? Sure, if, if, there's a, if you're showing like the crowd, uh-huh. and then the crowd, you can do I that, see. but I mean the interviews, I would like that. I see. But, if, but I mean, people come over here to share their views, to spread the word. I mean, if I'm, if I'm in a public Look, place I'm just with, a with posters. Huh? I'm making a request. Uh, sure. Вы говорите по-русски? Вы говорите по-русски? A little bit. A little bit, okay. So you're the one who wrote this, I guess. Россия для нас не враг, надо украинские нацисты нам враги. I asked some of my friends to help make sure the translation is correct. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I can verify that because I speak both languages. Russia is not our enemy, okay? Native and Ukraine Nazis are. Perfect. <laughs> I'm curious, what do you think of the, the you know, the neo-Nazis in Ukraine, right? The Azov Battalion, right sector, the people who support